So here we're going to look at some of the vasculature and we're going to start with the equine vasculature within the pelvic cavity. So we're looking cranially to caudally into the pelvic cavity. We see the aorta or descending aorta coming caudally back towards the area of the pelvic cavity just for orientation. We see an artery coming directly off of the aorta and coming over here towards this structure, which is the ovary. So that's going to be the ovarian artery. The aorta continues caudally until it terminates as external iliac arteries and internal iliac arteries. There is no median sacral artery in the equine. That is a structure that will be within the bovine. So here we see the external iliac artery coming off of the aorta. This first branch you see going laterally over towards the internal abdominal oblique is the deep circumflex iliac artery. The deep circumflex iliac artery then splits into a cranial branch that goes kind of dorsally and cranially, and this caudal branch that goes more ventrally. As we continue distally down the external iliac in the equine, the next branch we're going to get is this uterine artery. So in the equine, the uterine artery is a direct branch from the external iliac coming directly here to the uterus. In the bovine, the uterine artery is a direct branch of the umbilical artery. As we continue distally down the external iliac, the next artery we will get coming off will be the deep femoral, and the external iliac then terminates as the femoral artery. The deep femoral comes off, kind of runs in a caudally directed manner, and then will terminate as the pudendoepigastric trunk and the large artery going down deep into the medial aspect of the thigh muscles. That's going to be the medial circumflex femoral. The pudendoepigastric trunk gives off two branches, the caudal epigastric, which runs along the lateral aspect of the rectus abdominis, and the external pudendal that will actually move through the inguinal canal and will come out on the ventral aspect of the body wall where it will give off the cranial, or I'm sorry, the caudal superficial epigastric artery. And in a female, that can be called the mammary artery. And then it will also give off a branch that will run caudally, either the ventral labial branch, or you can also call, call that the caudal mammary artery in a female. So let's come back up here to the aorta. We've run through all of the proximal branching of the external iliac. Now we will move to some of the branching of the internal iliac. And in the horse, the branching is totally different than the branching within the bovine. So if we look here, I'm gonna to try to move some of these arteries out of the way. We can now see the internal iliac artery giving off the internal pudendal artery and the caudal gluteal artery. So again, the internal iliac gives off the internal pudendal and the caudal gluteal. In the horse, the internal pudendal very quickly gives off the umbilical artery, which here is now closed down. It's not patent anymore. And it's running over here towards the bladder. So that's going to become the round ligament of the bladder. The internal pudendal then continues caudally, and the next branch that it's going to be giving off in the female is going to be the vaginal artery. The vaginal artery is then gonna give off some caudal branches that are gonna come down here towards the area of the bladder, which is gonna be caudal vesicle arteries, and it's also going to give off a uterine branch that's gonna run along the uterus. The internal pudendal then continues caudally, exits the pelvic cavity to go around the coccygeus and levator ani muscles, and then comes out back in this region here. Now going back 
we can see, again, the internal pudendal coming off the internal iliac, and now we see the caudal gluteal. Now the caudal gluteal gives off this artery right here that's running with a large nerve with the same name. This is the obturator artery and obturator nerve. The obturator artery then gives off a separate artery that's going to go deep down in the muscles and that's going to be the iliacofemoral artery. So if you see an artery coming off of the obturator and diving ventrally, that's the iliacofemoral artery. Traveling back up to the area of the caudal gluteal, we can also see the cranial gluteal coming off right here. So this artery that's coming off the caudal gluteal and diving through the greater ischiatic foramen is the cranial gluteal artery. And it's in this region that we should also have an artery coming off and going ventrally down around the ilium, and that's going to be the iliolumbar artery. So usually the iliolumbar artery comes off of the cranial gluteal artery. So just to review, the caudal gluteal artery gives off the obturator artery in this cadaver, the cranial gluteal artery, and then the iliolumbar is the one that's going to be coming off here, going ventrally around the wing of the ilium from the cranial gluteal artery.